Well, the work was done in collaboration with my colleague, Silvia Andronik. Uh, we are associate professor at the Department of Physics at the Technical University of Moldova. And namely, my presentation will be about organic crystals of P-type TTT2 iodine 3 and N-type TTT TCNQ2 as prospective thermoelectric materials for biomedical sensors. It is a very interesting uh, topic, so uh, I'm, I have structured my presentation the following, uh, giving an introduction, the state of art uh, of uh, the current state of art in this domain. Also, we will talk about the physical model for these crystals. Uh, I will present the transport processes and thermoelectric coefficients, some numerical calculations, numerical modeling. Uh, also, we have modeled a PN thermoelectric module um, made of these organic crystals, and finally, uh, some results and some conclusions. So, uh, dear colleagues, what is thermoelectrics? I hope uh, all of you are um, in touch with this, uh, this topic. Well, thermoelectrics is uh, a collective application of thermoelectric effects. This includes the Beck effect, Peltier effect, and Thomson effect. Uh, the first two are most utilized in industry, so thermoelectrics can directly convert electricity into a temperature difference and heat flow. Uh, this namely is Peltier effect, used, used for cooling, and uh, we can convert directly a temper temperature difference into electricity via Seebeck uh, effect. Well, uh, the thermoelectric, uh, a thermoelectric pair is consisting of two legs of P-type semiconductor or N-type semiconductor connected in, uh, in Syria. So uh, if we apply a temperature gradient, the charge carriers will flow uh, along the legs, creating a difference of potential and finally, of course, uh, an electric current. Here you can see in this figure a sketch of thermoelectric device uh, used in the first case as a thermoelectric generator. And then the second case, if we apply uh, voltage, uh, we can obtain a heat flow, so we can cool one side uh, down to very interesting temperature, down to minus 20 degrees Celsius or, or more. Well, uh, there are a lot of application of these devices. Of course, in the first case, as a power generation applications, uh, in extreme environment, using radioisotope power generation, power generation for remote areas, uh, the recovery of wasted heat from the industry, also micro generation generator for sensors and electronics, uh, heat and power systems, solar heat recovery, as well as for uh, cooling applications, such as uh, refrigeration, electronics, cooling, air conditioning, thermal comfort, thermal convenience, and also a big uh, area of application of such uh, materials is the biomedical applications area, which include refrigerate, refrigerators, thermoelectric chillers. Also, uh, thermoelectric uh, models are used in devices uh, performing polymerization re reaction. Here we need uh, an accurate temperature control. So the usual uh, refrigerators are not feasible for this purpose. Uh, also, it is very interesting to explore the domain of converting body heat into electricity to power medical devices and sensors. Here are wearable sensors, implantable devices, and so on. Also, I have not mentioned here in slide, uh, but uh, such models can be used as infrared sensors for non-contact uh, thermometers, which now uh, during the pandemic are widely used. Uh, well, when they measure uh, the temperature with contactless uh, thermometers in, that, in these devices, uh, they use also thermoelectric generators. So uh, this is the, the main um, motivation for our researchers. Uh, for our investigations. Uh, also, uh, the thermoelectrics have has many advantages, such as solid state with no moving parts, 
no greenhouse gases require scalability, efficiency, and so on. You can see on the slide. Uh, several uh, very important features for such devices are presses, temperature control, uh, silent operation, and fast response time. Uh, by the other hand, organic thermoelectric materials, uh, um, prospective area of investigations, because uh, they are low cost, flexible, lightweight, non-toxic, and uh, they have well tunable electronic properties via simple chemical manipulation. So the technology of, of, of obtaining, growing, and synthesis of such materials is less uh, expensive. And because we have uh, such uh, more internal interactions, we can manipulate with the internal structure in order to obtain, to obtain high uh, reliability and high efficiency of such devices. Okay, so uh, in order to characterize a thermoelectric a material uh, by Yoffe in uh, the last century was proposed a parameter, a dim dimensionless parameter uh, denounced as thermoelectric figure of merit, which is related to electrical conductivity of material, the Zebec coefficient, and the thermal conductivity. Okay, so the thermal conductivity and the electrical conductivity are the properties of material to diffuse uh, the uh, thermal energy or to provide uh, the um, charge transport. Uh, while the Sebec coefficient is the coefficient describing uh, the amount of energy carried by each uh, charge carriers, namely by each electron. So uh, in order to use such materials as thermoelectric sensors, it is very important to have as high as possible power factor. This product of sigma s squared uh, is a parameter which we investigate in order to, uh, to find and uh, to uh, describe a thermoelectric material. So uh, the state of the art in this domain, according to a publication from 2019, uh, is the following. So in different organic polymers, composite, including uh, carbon nanotubes, uh, switched carbon nanotubes, uh, and, and the, many of them are based on P dot, a polymer. Uh, so uh, very important results uh, were obtained uh, with high uh, power factors, as you can see here. So uh, the state of, of art is very promising in this domain. And uh, also uh, a thermoelectric generators constructed from two pairs of P and N legs have proved uh, very uh, interesting results. Uh, as you can see here, the citation also is, uh, is uh, two years ago. So uh, yeah, in this domain, many works uh, has to be done and uh, um, the area is very, very important, and especially for, for uh, uh, using as uh, biomedical devices for different applications. Okay, so uh, we are investigating two types of crystals, uh, namely a P-type, ttt 2 iodine 3 and uh, ttt in q 2 organic crystals. Uh, such crystals are uh, very specific because uh, they have a nanostructured uh, internal, uh, nanoscale internal structure consisting of molecular chains, of TTT, of donor acceptor pairs. So uh, along the molecular chains, uh, um, a wide, uh, okay, a narrow uh, conduction band is opening. So uh, such materials are providing high electrical conductivity of, of metal-like type. And uh, also the N-type uh, crystal uh, is, has a similar internal structure. And this is the point we are uh, lying on. So uh, such materials can provide very, very interesting thermoelectric properties. Of course, uh, we, uh, we were uh, preparing, we were investigating these crystals 
in the frame of a physical model developed by, um, uh, by our group, uh, first by Professor Cassian, and then uh, by us as his uh, PhD students. So uh, the three-dimensional physical model of both crystals are presented in uh, these uh, presented uh, papers. And uh, in briefly, which include, uh, what include this physical model, we have constructed it uh, basing on a Hamiltonian, uh, considering electronic part, uh, phononic part. Also, we considered electron phonon interactions. Uh, and also, we considered the impurity scattering in the material because it's very important to consider also the defects of the lattice and the impurity scattering. We are talking about uh, organic materials. So, uh, as you can guess, in such organic materials, the uh, chemical bond is uh, not very high. So, different uh, uh, crystalline structures can appear. Uh, crystalline defects can appear. So um, uh, the main uh, keystone for our um, physical model is the coexistence of two electron phonon interaction mechanisms, is namely the mechanism of different of um, uh, deformation potential and the mechanism of uh, polaron type which is related to the mean polarizability, high mean polarizability of organic molecules. So uh, we have uh, deduced and we have observed that uh, for uh, different uh, states in the conduction band, the two mentioned above, uh, above uh, interaction mechanisms can interfere with each other, leading to a high relaxation time. This relaxation time, which we mentioned here, is directly related to the uh, electrical conductivity of the material, which is very important to obtain high values of power factor. So according to our uh, physical model, we have expressed our, uh, the electrical conductivity, thermal power, and finally the power factor through uh, such called transport integrals. Uh, and here we have a term describing the mass of mass operator of green function, considering all the, inter, the most important interactions in the crystal, of course. So uh, um, our uh, investigations uh, were going further by including the temperature difference, uh, the uh, thermal extension of the lattice, and also the thermally activated impurities or lattice defects. Uh, okay, so uh, the obtained results, here you can see the dots are representing experimental data and the line, the dashed lines and the solved lines are expressing our uh, numerical modeling. Of course, uh, for lower temperature, uh, the physical model has to be improved, but in uh, for uh, near to room temperature applications, we can observe that our physical model is describing very well the experimental uh, data. Uh, as for electrical conductivity, as well for say back coefficient, as you can see the experimental data and the theoretical modeling. Uh, the data were used to fit our three parameters in our model. Further, we uh, tried to uh, model the say back coefficient and the power factor of uh, these materials, uh, namely for uh, TTT2 iodine 3 of P type, we have modeled for different temperature and for different concentrations of uh, charge carriers in the structure. As you can see, we can observe the main tendency of um, improving these materials, of improving the thermality properties of these materials by simple uh, de-doping or uh, simple diminishing the charge carriers in the materials. This can be done by simple evaporating uh, the iodine from, from, uh, from the crystal. So uh, in the following, uh, I have tried to uh, draw some dependences of um, electrical conductivity and setback coefficient of P-type crystal 
and of n-type crystal as a function of dimensionless Fermi energy of the, the, the material, which is directly related to the concentration of charge carriers, of course. So it is observed that uh, um, in both crystals, by uh, accurate tuning of charge carrier concentration, we can achieve uh, relatively high values of CB coefficient, as well as high electrical conductivities. Of course, uh, these two uh, values, these two physical quantities are uh, inversely related. So with, uh, of course, with uh, the increasing of S, the electrical conductivity is decreasing. This is a well-known law in physics. So, um, uh, so we cannot uh, uh, violate this law. Uh, however, in such crystals, it is uh, predicted theoretically that this uh, relationship between, between uh, uh, two quantities can be broken. Uh, so uh, a thermoelectric module, a PN thermoelectric module, uh, is consisting, as I said before, of a P-type and of an N-type leg. So we propose to use, uh, for this purpose, uh, our, our crystals so, or these crystals investigated before. Uh, for output voltage, we used such a um, simple formula and uh, the maximum power is uh, the maximum delivered power from uh, uh, such a, devices, uh, a device is uh, described by uh, as uh, U square over four RG where RG is the internal resistance of uh, the module. Uh, of course, uh, we have considered for our numerical calculations uh, a length of the legs five millimeters and the SP and SN are calculated numerically. So in the following, you can see the results of our um, uh, calculations. Uh, they are done for, uh, for a P and uh, for 10 P and pairs at the temperature difference of 20 Kelvin. In this case, we can observe that in uh, stoichiometric crystals of N-type without uh, changing uh, the carrier concentration, uh, such a device can provide up to 35 millivolts of uh, delivered voltage uh, with a maximum power of 70 milliwatts at room temperature or for a temperature near to room, uh, to room one. And uh, also by uh, improving the properties, namely by diminishing the charge carriers concentration in the P-type crystal, uh, as you can see, the delivered voltage can be significantly increased as well as the power factor is of, uh, of an order of uh, magnitude higher uh, in this case. So uh, uh, as conclusion, uh, we can uh, predict that uh, a thermoelectric module made of these crystals can be uh, very successfully applied for uh, biomedical applications as uh, thermoelectric sensors, as uh, infrared uh, sensors, or as uh, thermoelectric coolers. Of course, the main uh, methodology for improving the properties of such crystals is well known and is well described in our papers. And also it was proved experimentally that such procedures are applicable and are providing very, very good results. So uh, uh, here you can see the conclusions. Uh, I will not read uh, all the, the slide, but I want to mention uh, that um, from a single uh, pair of PN of such materials, we can, as is, uh, is shown here, we can obtain high values of power factor even for crystals non-optimized, uh, namely stoichiometric synthesized crystals. And this is uh, directly related to the coexistence of two uh, electron phonon interaction mechanisms in, in such materials. Uh, thank you for your attention, dear colleagues. If you have any questions, I will be happy to answer. So uh, please feel free. So uh, thank you very much for your presentation, Dr. Sandulak, for survey and for calculations.
And now, uh, dear colleagues, uh, any question, please? May I ask you a question? Yeah, of course. Can you hear me? Uh, dear Dr. Sundurak, uh, do you consider that organic uh, crystals is a breakthrough in this uh, domain? Thank you for your question. Uh, I will say it is a breakthrough in the domain of low temperature gradients because uh, for uh, higher temperatures, uh, below uh, or above uh, 700 kelvins, they are inorganic materials successfully applied in the industry, which allow a high rate of conversion. But um, such materials, such inorganic materials for, high, for low temperature have very, very low conversion rate. So uh, uh, yes, for low range temperature application, the organic materials can make a break through in this uh, area, I think. Do you consider that uh, cryogenic temperatures also could be covered by these organic crystals? Uh, well, for, uh, for obtaining low uh, temperatures, uh, below, I'm say 50 Kelvin degrees or uh, 15 Celsius degree, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we, it, uh, at the moment, the, in the industry, they are using cascade uh, models. Uh, so uh, organic crystals can be applied at the top, uh, at one stage of the cascade, and then uh, they can be applied uh, other inorganic ones to diminish uh, uh, the temperature below and below. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Sandulak, I also have a question. Can you comment what is the softening temperature of these uh, molecular crystals? Mm -hmm. The softening temperature. That means um, why this... Uh, I'm sorry, Professor you know Sandulak, because, uh, of poor, because of poor connection, I couldn't hear your previous answer, question. I will repeat, the temperature of softening. Um, yeah, 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 I got it. Of these crystals. <laughs> yes, it is a problem. Uh, and it's a, uh, a very good question, thank you. Um, so uh, the crystal are resistant uh, up to a temperature of 400 uh, Kelvin degrees. 400? 403, 400 Kelvin, Kelvin degrees, I mean. Kelvin, in Celsius, yeah. in Celsius. Oh, thank yes. you. But I think that is a problem of using, of practical using of these materials, because uh, you see, um, calculations are very good, but what are the practice? Are they, are they really good materials or only uh, from? Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, the practical applications we are aiming for uh, low temperature gradients because uh, uh, the structure is organic uh, with the uh, iodine inclusions in the p-type and the iodine can uh, easily evaporate from the uh, from the structure but uh, for uh, low temperature gradients i mean near to room temperature the uh, structure is very stable uh, mm -hmm. My PhD supervisor, namely Professor Cassian, has kept in his, his house uh, such crystal for 20 years. And uh, he repeated the experimental measurement after 20 years. And the results have shown very uh, uh, good results, uh, better than uh, the initial ones. So uh, uh, there is a present a, such a, a temporal annealing of the properties because the uh, structure is uh, rearranging in time. Also, um, uh, such materials can be used for uh, infrared sensors, uh, which uh, mm -hmm. are applying for low temperature gradient. We consider, uh, of course, the mechanism is of focusing infrared radiation on such a PN uh, a module mm -hmm. or PN pair. And the low uh, uh, 
temperature allow to, to emit a low electrical signal. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, 